Welcome to The Boss Experience, the podcast that gives you actionable tips and strategies to start your business. And I'm your host, Michelle Davis. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of The Boss Experience. My name is Michelle Davis and I'm your host. And in this episode, I'm going to be discussing business planning. So here we are headed into another year and you need to think about where you are in your journey, in your entrepreneurship journey. If you get nothing else out of this episode, I want you to learn a few things. The first is I want you to to know the importance of having a business plan. And I want you to know that business planning is not a one-time thing. It takes place throughout the course in life of your business, which hopefully for everyone is a very long time. And a business plan is needed, whether you're starting an online or an offline business. So with that being said, now that you know what I want you to get out of this episode, let's talk about why you need a business plan. So what exactly does a business plan help you do? Well, a business plan helps you forecast your business. It's a roadmap and it's a forecasting tool. I'll use myself as an example when you think about like why you need a business plan. So when I first started my business back in 2016, I was just over the moon about getting started. I was going to be my own boss and do all these amazing things and make all this money because I was listening to so many people online about the type of business to start and how much money I was going to make and listening to all of this free content and the different programs I was buying and signing on to, to get my business started. And during this whole process, I did not take the time, despite all of my common sense and education, I did not take the time to simply reflect on what I, who I wanted to be as a business owner, what I wanted to be known for, where was I going as a business? Like, what would my business look like down the road a year from, from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? What was my overarching goal? Who were my competitors? You know, and what was my market about? Because, you know, I was focusing on people telling me what was profitable and, and, you know, telling me what type of business to start. But I never, I never really took the time to really reflect on what I was good at and what I wanted to start and where my strengths and skills and expertise could best be utilized to help my clients. And so with a business plan, If I'd had a business plan, if I had taken the time to write one, I would have had a different perspective on my business. I would have had a different perspective on where I was and where I wanted my business to go. And I most certainly am 100% sure I would have done things differently. And so the thing is, is when you're consuming things online and you're listening to people online about the type of business you should start and the, you know, this is the million dollar idea, or this is the million dollar industry. And this is that, you know, in all of that, unfortunately, there's not enough talk to really have you really sit down as an aspiring entrepreneur and just plan out what you really want, what you want to be known for, who you are as a business owner, what skills and passions do you have, and really helping you to really capture a market. And so when we think about business planning, that's exactly what a business plan does. It helps you understand your market, capture your market, and know what's happening in your industry. A lot of people start businesses and they have no clue what's going on. You have no clue what's going on. You're leaving it up to people online to tell you what's happening in your industry. And so when you take the time to write a business plan, you get to know what's happening in your industry and you get this roadmap, like I mentioned earlier, and you get this, this kind of forecasting tool. I'm going to tell you about the time I drove across country. I decided to drive from California to New York. And so let's pretend like where I was in California is kind of where I, my starting point for, for my business. And New York was where I want it to be five years from now in my business. So, and everything in in between is my journey. So imagine if I had no, like no map and I just started off 
driving, no direction. And I only listen to other people about what direction I should go. How do you think that would turn out for me? So essentially, when you don't have a business plan, that's what your journey looks like on, in the entrepreneurship world too. When I, when I drove from California to New York, I had me, my daughter, my pug, and that was it. And, but you know what else I had? I had a map to tell me where to go. There is no way I'm going to get in a car and, and drive and not know where I'm going. In fact, I not only knew where I was going, I knew I sat down, I planned how long I wanted to be on the road what I wanted to do in each city. I mapped out like, you know, what that travel looked for me, where I was going to stay. I knew I would only probably have enough stamina to drive so far. And then having a small child who was seven at the time and, you know, a dog. And then so, I mean, there was a lot of different elements and factors, but I sat down and planned it out. So if, you know, think about your trips and, and things that you plan out, the same care that you take to plan out your, the rest of your life is the same care you want to take to plan out your business. So with that being said, let's, let's just talk about what exactly we know that a business plan will help us, you know, give us a roadmap to where we're going. We know that a business, a business plan helps us examine the market and helps us understand our, you know, what kind of costs are associated with starting a business. But let's talk about the different elements in our business plan. So the first part of your business plan is your executive summary. Your executive summary is basically a summary of your mission, what you sell, who you are as a company, why your company exists or why your business exists and where you're going. What are your future plans? And your executive summary is at the beginning. But what I advise my clients to do when I'm working with my clients regarding business planning is save the executive summary to the end. Because while it's a very, very short blurb in everything you're going to put together in your business plan, it's so important that you get that executive summary right because it it simply states why your business exists. And uh, what a lot of people will do, they'll think they have to write the intro first. And it's your introduction to everything else. And, and you want that to capture the reader's attention. So whether you're applying for funding, you're applying for grants, you're applying for, you know, whatever it is you're applying for, you're looking for, you know, you can reuse that executive summary for other materials as well. When you are looking for partnerships, whatever it is. You want it to be a statement that captures attention and captures the attention of the reader, but you also want it to be something that where the reader is going to want to see what's happening with this company, what's next, where are they going and build some kind of excitement. The next section of your business plan is a company overview. And your company overview basically talks about who your company is. And this is different than the executive summary. Remember the executive summary is just that, a summary. So now you're in the heart of your business plan with a company overview and you really get into detail about who you are as a company. Who do you serve? What big problem do you solve for who you serve and how you solve that big problem? And I've worked with some clients in the past that really, really have a hard time with really refining who they are as a company, as a brand, just as a business owner. They don't know who they serve. They try and serve everyone. And that's not the message you want to have in your business plan. You, This is where you take the time to plan. Who do you serve? What's the big problem you solve? And how are you solving it? Laying out your entire framework for how you solve that problem in, in detail so that it's clear to the reader that you know what you're doing, you're worth investing in, you're worth taking a second look at. And most importantly, before, even if no one else reads your business plan, you want to be clear on on these things as well. You want to know who is your company in terms of identity? Who do you serve? And what value do you add to your ideal client? Who is your ideal client? And what big problem are you solving for for them? And how do you do it? These are things you should be defining anyway. So in this case, it's just part of your business plan. The next section you want to include in your business plan is a market analysis. So 
instead of like kind of jumping into your business head first, before you start your business, you want to know what your market is doing, what's happening in your market. How big is your market for whatever it is that you intend to sell? What are the the opportunities in your market? Looking at your competitors, is there a gap somewhere that you can capitalize on? Is there something missing that you can add to your service to make sure that you, you are capturing a part of the market that they, they can't or that they're missing? And so you want to take the time to kind of look at your industry, know what's happening, know if it's going to be worth your time to structure your business in a certain way. So let's say you conduct a market analysis and maybe you determine that there's, you know, for maybe the service you're thinking about doing that the market is too small for whatever reason, whatever service, or you don't like what you see. Don't give up on entrepreneurship, but just take a step back and maybe revamp your plan. So don't give up on your goal, just change your plan. And so, you know, look at your market, know if it's going to be a good idea or not. Market analysis is something you should be doing regardless of whether you're writing a plan or, you know, you're launching a new product or service. And you have to keep that in mind that you should be examining your market at all times. The next section of your business plan is organization and management. When people start a business, they tend to automatically think they have to start an LLC. If you don't take the time to plan and do your research, you really don't know if an LLC is the best business structure for you. You know, you have to consider like, how do you plan to structure your business? Not just now, but also in the future. Like, where is your company headed? What are the tax ramifications? You know, are you taking the best advantage of the, of the tax laws by starting an LLC? And how should that LLC be structured? So these are all things you want to take into account when you're thinking about your organization and management. Another consideration you want to have is what does your company look like in a perfect world? Let's pretend you have all the money you need for your company. What does it look like in terms of your team? Who are your key hires? What do those people do? That is all part of of this section of the plan. You're laying out your framework. You're identifying those team members. Even if you don't have a chance, don't have any revenue right now, you want to have a thought of how you want your company to eventually look. And so that's what you capture in the organization and management section of your plan. So the next section of your plan is your product and service section. And so this is where you talk about your product in detail. What is your product? Is your product already created? Is it something that needs to be created? Or are you providing the service? What is the service? And, you know, what does it take for you to get up and running? When will you be up and running? What are your supply chain issues for you to be able to carry out that service or for you to be able to deliver that product? And I know you're thinking like, if I'm, I just want to open an online boutique, right? So even with an online boutique, you have to think about, you know, your materials, like things that you're sourcing, where are those things coming from? Are you making these things yourself? Or, you know, are you going to outsource that? Like, how are you putting everything together? And so whether it's you or someone else that's reading your plan, you want to be clear on all what it takes to actually produce what you're producing. And so when you're thinking about this section, you don't want to be beholden to any supplier. You want to know who your suppliers are, how you're going to get your products in, and how long it's going to take to produce your products and services. And so that's why this section is so important, because you have to factor those things in. You may not want to invest time and money in something that's not, that's going to turn out to not fare very well for you if a customer has to wait a long time, you know, two to three weeks for a delivery when Amazon, they can get stuff from Amazon the next day. And maybe you'll never be able to produce next day delivery, but you want to be competitive. And so think about this in your product and service section, when you're thinking about how are you going to actually carry out your product or service? How will it be created? Is it something that has to be, does the creation of it have to be outsourced? Like what exactly are you delivering to your customer? The next section of your business plan is your marketing and sales. This is where a lot of people kind of stumble because they don't 
not only do they not take the time to write a business plan, but they're also not writing a marketing and sales plan either. And you need both. So your marketing and sales plan does two things. One is it clarifies how you'll get your your product in front of customers. Like how do you plan to make them aware of your product or service? The second thing your marketing and sales plan does is it talks about how are you going to turn them from you know, visitors or kind of the looky-loos into actual sales. So this section is very, very important when you think about how you're going to, you know, be a profitable business owner. What exactly should this section cover? Well, the first thing you want to cover is positioning. What makes your product or service different than everyone else on the market. Are you going to just be a cookie cutter of everyone else? Or are you going to really look at what's out there and look at and look within and see what it is that you're bringing that's unique to the table? People are tired of seeing the same voices, the same people delivering the same content. They want to see something different. So you have to think, how will you stand out in the market amongst all the noise so that people actually, your ideal client actually sees you, right? They actually see you and they see your value. And most importantly, they take the time to tune in to what you have to offer. You need to define your process. Are you, you know, do you need payment processor like Stripe? Are you going to use PayPal? Like these are all the things that you want to think through. Do you need a sales funnel? Are they coming from social media and you're taking them, you know, somewhere else? So all of these things need to be laid out in this section so that you can be successful and be actually being able to not just write this plan, but carry it out. The next section of your business plan is your financial projections. So based on everything you've done so far, your market analysis, your marketing, what can you expect in terms of revenue. And I also want to say that the revenue that you get in, especially in the beginning, you want to be able to turn that back around and put it back into your business. So you need, but you need to want to have an idea of how much can you expect to earn so that you can have a realistic, and I want to repeat, realistic idea of what you really expect to earn in this business. Because I think you're, you're sold a lot of unrealistic numbers in the online world when people are trying to capture your attention. The numbers are thrown out there like six figures, million dollar earners, and all of that is great. Whatever you aspire to have, you know, whether it's six figures, whether it's the million dollars, you have to have a plan. You have to be able to do the work that gets you there. And it doesn't just happen just by listening to someone online, you actually have to have a foundation and you have to have the work in place to get to where you want to be. So look at this as more of what's realistic based on my data and my research in terms of what I can earn. Because the other thing you have to look at too is your time. And so if you only have so many hours to actually produce the results for yourself, you know, you have to factor that in too in terms of your projections. So if you're still working a nine to five, it's unrealistic to think that you're going to carry out all these different activities and your projections are going to be so high that you're going to earn those six figures if you're not making time to work on your business. So just make sure you're realistic. You're you're basing your projections on your actual market analysis and everything that you've looked at so far. So just a recap of what you need as an online entrepreneur for your business plan. Number one, you need an executive summary. The next thing you need is a company overview. And then there's the market analysis. We talked about having a marketing and sales strategy. Then there's organization and management. Then there was products and services. And then there's the marketing and sales plan. And finally, your financial projections. So I want to leave you with this. Creating a business plan gives you clarity and it helps you have vision for what you want your business to look like right from the start. And even if you started your business already and you're wondering, well, I've never done a business plan. There's no perfect time to do one than now. It's never too late. Just because you've started already doesn't mean you can't take the time to do this now. Because the thing is, I think a lot of people get so caught up that how they start in business needs to be what they do and they they can't pivot. 
And I don't want you to feel like you can never pivot. You're going to find that you're going to start a lot of things in your business that aren't necessarily things that you want to continue in your business. You never want to get caught up in the fact that you can't change and you can't make things better just out of habit. And business planning allows you to do that. You have to get in the habit of creating business plans, writing your business plan, and auditing your business for what's working, what's not working. So you can, you're constantly pulling things out that aren't bringing you in the revenue that you want. And you're constantly shifting gears, at least on a quarterly basis. How did this product do? How am I doing? Am I meeting my goals? Because you need, you may need to make some small tweaks along the way. And the most important thing I want you to understand is that no one starts off as this perfect business owner. We all make mistakes. And with, no matter where you are in your entrepreneurial journey, it's no different. You will make mistakes. You will encounter issues. And if you have a plan, it will be a lot easier for you to pivot when you make those mistakes than if you don't have a plan and you're just like flopping in the wind, you know, go, you know, doing things as you go, you'll never see the growth that you desire that way. And you can't reach any goals if you don't have any. So with that being said, that concludes this episode. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Boss Experience. Thank you for listening to The Boss Experience Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and watch my next episode. Take care and be well.